Soviet Union at that time as well oh, didn't have much going for it because I, I read I think it was Brian Mooney I think I, I read a, an interview with him there a while ago where he said that some of the lads in the squad were bringing over Levi's yeah, we Levi did. jeans to sell to the locals like. myself and Brian Kerr went down Brian Kerr of course was assistant wasn't he he was there uh, Noel O'Reilly yeah. Liam Toohey and uh, we went out and we ended up selling them myself and Brian <laughs> But no, we all knew because they were there. They were there too. Yeah, was it the year outside? Hot scarves, headbands, and Levi's. That was it. Yeah. <laughs>We are here now in Daily Moon Park for episode 6 of RTB and I'm delighted to welcome two special guests to the show Bose legend uh, Derek Swan, Swanny, affectionately known to the fans and uh, recent convert to the Bose faithful Mr PJ Gallagher So thanks very much for joining us lads, cheers, thanks for coming along and all that and all that and all that yeah. um, But uh, Derek if I could start with yourself um, It's you know you're still to this day held in high affections with the Bose fans um, Do you have good memories of your time in Daily Moon? Uh, Unbelievable! It was. It just w started when I came here, and I think it was uh, 85, 86 season, and it just. And you came from home farm, wasn't it? Yeah, I had, yeah. A, I had a season at home farm, um, but I, I was carrying an injury after my youth career. I was on the verge of going to West Brom, and uh, that I snapped my Achilles tendon when I was supposed to be going away on a match oh, for the international. To Iceland, so I missed out on the Iceland game, and I missed out. So my dad said to me, "Are you going to finish?" I was just, I'd left school, and I was serving my time. As a, so he says, "You're going to finish serving your time." So it took me about a year to get back. Right. And I was playing um, bits and pieces for Home Farm. I think I made about six or seven League of Ireland appearances. Yeah. And then Billy came in for me. I went in to get new boots. Billy used to. Billy Young used to. He had a shop there in Temple Bar, a sports oh, shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went in to get a new pair of boots and uh, I had, he asked me to come down. And Did he know who you were, Derek, when he walked in? Yeah, he knew. He, 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 was, he, he wanted to sign me before oh. I was going from Belvo. Um, there was a couple of like, Rovers and uh, Billy wanted me to sign. Um, but when I got the injury at that particular time, you know, People wanted to see where you're going to come back, you know what I mean? Because it was a pretty severe uh, injury. But I made it back in about a year and then I signed for uh, Bowes. And I had a season, the first season I was an amateur with uh, Bowes. And we had a very, very good season. We, I think we finished second or third that season. And I ended up, I don't know, I think 10 or 12 goals or something, around 10 goals or something like that. And uh, it was, that's where I started, like with uh, Jackie and... We had a very good team, you know, at that, that particular time, and a couple of the lads were kind of coming maybe to the end of their career, yeah. you know what I mean? And it was like a changeover, like a new breed of Bowes players were coming in, and yeah. you were leading that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was coming in, I was like, the, the lads that I, I were playing with, I would have been probably uh, 19 at that, that particular time, and the guys that were all a lot older, were, most of them would have been, you know, the guts are 10 years older than me, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was kind of... You know, playing with men, so you were. Yeah, so it must have been quite intimidating for a young lad coming into a dressing room like that. As you say, seasoned pros who, you know, were, were, were used to the League of Ireland and you're coming in relatively wet behind the ears and all that. I was. A great learning curve for you. I was, yeah. yeah. Great learning curve on and off the pitch. I'd say so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it, your first spell, like the first spell of Bowes went really well, like, you know, like, like I think four or five seasons, whatever, like you were averaging 10, 12 goals a season, which is great, and obviously you're a big fan's favourite. And then you went to Port Vale. Yeah, and it didn't work out. What was the? Other, it went to a team in Holland. Yeah, it? a team called Wageningen. I went on loan for a, 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 a what was I there? It was about six weeks there. Right. And I played eight games for them. Oh, right. but uh, it was a it was a very uh, I le you learned I learned a lot in eight weeks if you can understand that yeah. it was totally different football culture to a we were used to playing the ball. Set comfort zone and all that. Yeah, and different yeah, language and yeah. all that. And that was difficult in the dressing room, you yeah. know, with all, with the manager and then he the Dutch are all. <laughs> A lot yeah. of that going on. But 19, you know, most of them can speak good English, but they, they kind of, they uh, hold back, if, if that's the word, kind of, they're afraid of, to make a mistake, you know, right, where right, you're right. just happy to, to be listening to them, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, uh, it, was a, it was a very good um, experience. Like, you, you learn, I learned how to play in a different model, as it, yeah. you say. I, 
used to just drop off and you know I was just to hold the ball up yeah. and bring like the other team you know it was like a gradual the team yeah yeah and so you, then you, you, later in your career you got further and further up the pitch as you became more like the pinpoint of the of the attack yeah. uh, but that, that experience obviously stood you in good stead oh it was great dropping yeah. deep collecting the ball and added to your game as, a, as, a, as an out and out striker later on in your career yeah you, you learn, I learned a lot you know yeah. and you, you learned that you know it wasn't all about pumping the ball long you know what I mean so I just learned how to drop off and play and, 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 and play in we say as they call it now a number 10 role you know what yeah. I mean but like, oh, it was great great experience and it was a great learning curve you know and then you after that's when he went to uh, um, like he came back home from England um, and he, was it was it you went to Rovers? Yeah, I went to Rovers. We say we leave it at that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Come here, listen. They were playing big books at the time. It was all right, Swan. It's all right. <laughs> but like I was only, I think I was only in, uh, I was only in Port Vale. I think three weeks. I think I was no. <laughs> and the woman in the dig said to me, "I was I stayed in this house. Does." It was about four players we stayed in this house. There was a big house. Robbie Williams' favourite team, by the way. Yeah, that's, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, that's right. And <laughs> in, in Stoke, you know, and Stoke is made up. But anyway, I was only there three weeks, I think it was, and the woman in the house. And there was four players, and we lived up in. It was like the coach house part of the house. It was a big, lovely house. Wealthy people there were, and there were lovely people. I was only there three weeks, and there was a phone call. And the woman said, oh, we went downstairs, like, it wasn't now, like, mobile, you yeah, know. Yeah. So I went down and picked up the phone. There was no king on the phone. I heard you, you're not happy. He says, three weeks, I said, like, you had me a little. <laughs> and he was, he was manager of Rovers. And then a week, uh, about two nights later, the great man from here himself, that you, you, you were talking to earlier, Torlock, he was on to me within a week as well. Wow. I was spreading rumours about I don't know. I don't know. And I was, it wasn't even... <laughs> the days before social media and yeah. all, like, you know what I mean? And then <laughs> Jim McLaughlin, he was manager at Derry at the time as well. And he got on to me. So, so all the big guns of the League of Ireland were, had this idea that you were unsettled yeah. and wanted to come back home. Yeah, sure. It was only three weeks. So it wasn't even over my uh, uh, pre-season training, you know? <laughs> You're telling me he's unhappy. You don't believe yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So then I, I just said, no, I'm enjoying this, you know, I said, yeah. I'm loving the, the, the full-time training. We were only at the, coming back from Stirling University up in Scotland. We went up there and done the pre-season training, you know. Right. And that was a real eye-opener because it was proper, as you say, full-time training. Yes. Were, 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 Swanny, back in those days, were they, even talk, were they talking about diets and stuff like that at the uh, time yeah. and all you were, yeah? Yeah, back then right. everything was, uh, even like a poor fail, like it was, we used to do all yoga and everything oh, there. Yeah, they, they were really yeah. the manager there was a man called John Rudge and he was there for 17 years I think he was yeah. manager you know and he was very uh, you know what would you say science oh he's advanced in his and methods yeah, and all that yeah, kind of yeah. thing yeah yeah the way Wenger was when he came into the English game yeah yeah and he was he was the one like that said to me after a couple of after a month or two he said it'd be good for you to go to uh, Holland on loan and it'll help you because yeah. I was struggling with fitness wise not as in fitness your body when you go full time training your body takes a while to adjust to the right. full time training you can't even some, some of the, it's hard to believe that you can't control the ball at, things right. that you do natural because yeah. your, your, your body is so what would you say taking on you know more. It's still growing, it's developing and all that. And oh, muscles are coming yeah, out yeah, and new yeah. joints and all that. It takes out. a bit of time for yeah. your, your, your whole body to adapt to the full yeah, time. To calibrate it like, to yeah. a professional level. Yeah. Um, so so the, the, the Rovers move then happened after, one, well, how long then was it? Six months. Right. See, our, um, it was kind of, a, a, my wife was at the time, was she was expecting our second child. So she was over and back and her father was doing so it was kind of a okay. little bit of yeah. the, everything just happened at the wrong time like hindsight I'd love to stay of course and then then when the as I said when the phone call kept ringing you know and like I could have shells were in as well and they, they were all and <laughs> so I eventually just, you uh, went alright oh, I am unhappy uh, yes <laughs> so I, I had this you know, what happened was when I had the eight weeks over in Holland I came back and I was playing in the reserves and I was scoring, I was banging in the goals in yeah. the reserves. And I scored one night, I scored a hat trick anyway. And the manager wasn't at the games. And he was off, like, um, 
anyway scouting or whatever and he wasn't there and I said to myself uh, and then I said uh, what's the, the phone what's the point and you know I just said uh, here right. went in the next day I said off, you went. off I went and yeah. as gas the guys that couldn't get into the team then a month later they were in the in the first team because he sold a fella called Darren Beckford don't know whether you remember him the, was it he played for Leeds? Yeah. Striker? And, yeah. yeah. And he was, a, and Robbie Earl, you remember? Ah, Robbie Earl, he played for Wimbledon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, they, they sold them too. And the guys that couldn't get into the reserves, because I was in the reserves, were into the force team, ah. we're, in, we're in. But look, it's, it's that's, all, that's it's football. A, that's it? football. It's yeah, a, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. you know, so. Um, PJ, uh, so you don't know, did you, you know PJ, would you know PJ? No, all? just from the TV. From the TV, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you would be aware of his existence yeah, and all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, PJ is uh, is a recent convert to the to the to the to the League of Ireland and to Bowes. And it probably stemmed from a conversation myself and yourself had, was it, a while ago about you, I think you said to me along something along if I remember it correctly, PJ, you saying I remember you telling me you're into your sport and all that, and you're a big yeah. dubs fan. Yeah, well the dubs has been that's the family thing, you know. Yeah. I think, you know, you look back through the family, that's the one, that, that's where all my happy memories of going to matches with yeah. me, old man, or with all of that, you know, so the Hill and Hill 16 and all that. Uh, that was a thing. But I suppose we always watch football in our house, but I got very disinterested. I just went off football. I think, I, I, I mean, I've always gone to the, the Hill and always went to the matches. And I did, I don't want to say too much here because I don't want to be bitching about people, but I did a job <laughs> that involved football and I just remember thinking, this is just not... Yeah. I, I, I don't know, I don't see how I have any involvement in this yeah, or whatever, it was yeah, just, yeah. The, the, and I remember I was on, on gigging with you away in a different country, we were away yeah. gigging in Dubai and I remember saying to you at one point, jeez, I've lost all interest in football and everything. And uh, the weirdness is then I ended up playing in Daily Mill Park before I ever saw anyone else playing in Daily Mill Park right. because you approached me and said, will you do a gig? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You came when you said, we're doing a gig, will you, will you do a gig? And I think it was in this bar. It might have been actually, yeah, yeah. And we came into the Phoenix bar and... Uh, we were, there was just this buzz about the place. And uh, I got chatting to Dan, I got chatting to the other lads, and all of a sudden I was going, this is the feeling now, coming back into me that I used to get. Right. Walking to those games with me old man, and that yeah. sort of community feeling. I hadn't had it in a very, very, very long time. It, it, like, and uh, that whole winter, that was a long winter, and I remember I had the t-shirt that they gave me on the night, because <laughs> Bowes paid us in t-shirts that night, because they were raising <laughs> yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was all, that was just, I remember that, looking forward to the season happening. And then of course, the very first game after that was Bowls and Rover. The first match of the season. The first Bowles match of the season. Rovers, yeah. And I walked up here on my own. <laughs> I walked in on my own and I met your brother. Yeah. And uh, I walked in here and the place was on fire. Now I mean on fire, you know. Like the chant and the screaming and this bubbling, unbelievable atmosphere. And bear in mind, for the first time ever, I'd walked down through Fibsborough yeah. and I'd seen the place alive. Like, right. you know, like, al like alive. Like, yeah. like you'd just come out of a pandemic alive. <laughs> and this was a regular event. It's real normal. It wasn't normal for me. I'd never seen it. Yeah. And stood up the back of the stand there. Literally, all these faces I knew for years and didn't know they came to Daily Mill Park. Right, right, right. I'm like, what are you keeping this a secret for? This is brilliant. <laughs> this is brilliant, you know. And, and, and and the mad thing was, like, I was so thrilled that you were coming down to Bowes. That night, I was doing a charity gig and I couldn't be there. So we were saying, yeah. you, you were there with my brother and my son, Alex. Yeah. And I remember when I finished the gig, because I was keeping an eye on the scour and, and, and Bowes thankfully won the game. But I remember you the text afterwards of you saying to me, I've been to the Champions League, seen Ronaldo scoring a hat. I've been to world heavyweight fights. Yeah. I've been to MotoGP rally. I've been to, I've been to like, I've been road racing myself. You know, I've had these all these amazing sporting experiences. And that night, Paddy Cavan was running down the right hand side of the pitch, and he scores a goal and runs up to the chip van. <laughs> and there's grown men throwing their lives at this thing, and people rolling onto the pitch. And I was like, I've never seen anything like this. I have never seen anything like this. In my life, I have never had or seen this experience. And that was it. And I remember thinking, I'm never getting out of this place. I, mean, like, I, I remember, te and ever since then, I've been texting Eric, you know, I'm actually saying, I don't know if I love you or hate you for getting me involved in this because I can't get it out of my system. And it's great because you, I think, I'm in my 40s now, and it's very rare. You get to midlife, and it's very rare you get to experience something at the level. A new that, passion. For, that's for the yeah. first time. Yeah. You get that first kiss feeling. Yeah. And that's what it was. It was like that first kiss feeling. I was hooked. I'm hooked. I'll never, I don't think I'll ever get out of place. And again, like I'm sitting here and I'm still saying, I don't know whether I love you or hate you for it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 
Um, we got to wait in the madness of PJ for a second there. Sorry, <laughs> Swan, you know, that was brilliant. <laughs> um, you, 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 we, we, skipped, we skipped past it. You didn't, look, here, listen, let's be honest, you did great with Rovers as well. You had a great goal-scoring record with Rovers. But you ended up coming to Bowes to, 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 to turn the story around again. And, um, and, and one great thing as well about your career, Swanee, was even when you finished with Bowes for the second time, right, you still played in League of Ireland. You were playing with UCD, right, as a veteran striker. And, but your goals were pivotal in keeping UCD up in the league, which was a great season for you personally. Oh, the, the, that was a great uh, experience. I, I had retired and I was, what, six months I hadn't played in and uh, they, um, cousin of mine, Tony McDonald was the captain. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he was playing and um, Martin uh, Moran was the, the, the manager. And they, uh, I went to watch them. They were playing up against the uh, Rovers. Right, right. Up in... Um, Oh, Santry Santry Stadium. St oh, the the stadium. stadium yeah. So anyway, I went to the uh, to the match and I met them at the after the game. We went down to the comet and we were having a point and as usual they said, Listen, will you come back? And and I said, Well look, I said, Give me a few weeks. I'll come back, I'll start training on Tuesday. And then we'll do he says, Yeah, Jesus, he's <laughs> you look pretty fit, you know. So he said, All right, I'll come so I was training with them. Now I said Look, we'll give it a few weeks to see how I feel and all that. So I trained Tuesday, I trained Thursday, and he called me in and he said, we're trying Saturday morning. He says, I'm going to start you on Sunday. And I says, James, I says, I can't, I'm on back. Money back. <laughs> back. <laughs> and he says, you're flying, he says, in training, you know. So anyway, I said, I'll leave me, no, don't, don't start me this weekend. So anyway, I, said, I, I come on and sub. And then I, I trained two or three times after that. And then he used to say, I'll see you Sunday. You know, and yeah, I yeah. used to come up training at UCD and I'd go in into the, the gym and I'd do a bit of cycling on the bike and do a few things. And then Saturday morning, I'd play a bit of five sides and then I'd just play the game then. And that was that was me week there, you know. Amazing. And it, it was, it like was great. Like and I was flying. Amazing. And you're retired, but you're playing with all these young these kids. Yeah, yeah. Who must have must have been great for them to be in a, you know, sharing a, a dressing room with someone like yourself with vast experience in the league. And in the end, you helped keep them up. I helped keep them up, and uh, I think that season as well. Uh, um, we were playing shells, and shells were chasing balls down for the league, and balls were we went on and won the league, That's and right. we 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 took a nice point off. Yes, uh, yes. And I scored. Would you believe it? Now I scored in that game, and it should have been the winner, and it was disallowed, and we would have bit bet. So it would have meant Bowes had won the league earlier. Yeah, would, that would have won the league that night, and it would have been down to a Derek Swan goal. Well, that would have been poetic justice. It would have been a poetic justice. But uh, the referee disallowed it. But anyway. But uh, Derek, you, do, you, do you still do you still manage to come down to see Bowes when you can? Or yeah, well, my son Ryan, was, of course. was yes. here for yes. two years. He done his uh, knee. He was, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was unlucky with injuries anyway. And I used to come with myself and. Donald Brown and Donald, Robbie yeah. Brunton, yes. who was Robbie was a former player and he just passed away last year, yeah. you know, he had uh, he got bone marrow cancer and which was very tough. And his yeah. two boys come to the games all the time. Oh, they still so come we, down, they great. Yeah, yeah. So we used to go the three of us right. all the time to the yeah. games and watch them all the time. So like, right. you know, I'll I'll be back, as I say, I'll be back to watch them again, you know what I mean? As in because I love it. It's a great atmosphere yeah. and it's great going down to the we go down to the hood after the game. Oh, and lovely, like, yeah, yeah. You'd see Billy Young would be in there with his son, son in laws yeah. and that, you know. And, and I think that's the thing about Bowes, isn't it? And as PG even alluded to, you just see the familiar faces, like old friends yeah. and all that kind yeah. of thing. You, like, you'd yeah. see them all around Fisbury, yeah. you know, and you say, oh, geez, I haven't seen him in years, yeah, you know, all that, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's great, it always was, it was always a great, a great buzz, in, you know. And after the games, like even first and second spell, you used to come into the bar, you know, the players' bar, and it was. You'd had to, you know, you wouldn't know who you'd see in yeah, there. You yeah, know what I mean? And yeah. and there was always great uh, people that f supported Bowles through the years as well. You know. Yeah. And um, I I mentioned just before we 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 started the recording. Um, your part. Um, I wanted to talk to you about this because it was such a fascinating time in, in Irish underage football. And it was 1985. If I'm right, Derek. Yeah. You were in the USSR when before it became Russia. You were in the USSR uh, with that famous Lean Tui team. And you played in a, what was it a World Cup or yeah yeah you World Cup a yeah, U World yeah, Cup yeah. and oh, 
What an amazing experience that must have been because you were playing in like Leningrad, you were playing in Moscow. Like you were in a mad group with Brazil and Spain. Or Brazil, something. Spain and Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, yeah. 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 That was at 85, yeah. We, were into, we flew away to Moscow and then we flew down to Tbilisi. Tbilisi, yeah, yes, which is now Georgia, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah down yeah. there and we were down there for, I think it was three weeks. That was unbelievable down there. Like we, we it was, uh, the games were great. We played in the uh, Dynamo Tbilisi Stadium. And uh, we, what was it? We were beaten two one by Brazil. Yeah. Marcus Stewart, I think it was. Marcus scored, Stewart, that's scored, right, yeah. scored a goal, yeah. and I played the second game. Should have scored in that against Spain. They beat us, and then I remember we got something like two hundred quid, I think, for three weeks. That was ours. And uh, Saudi Arabia were on twenty grand a man. <laughs> So they, were f they were flown in with their own jet. But obviously, the Soviet Union at that time as well didn't have much going for it. Because I, I read, I think it was Brian Mooney, I think, I, I read a, an interview with him there a while ago where he said that some of the lads in the squad were bringing over Levi's, yeah, we Levi did. jeans to sell to the locals. Like. Myself and Brian Kerr went down. Brian Kerr, of course, was the system, wasn't he? He was there, Noel O'Reilly, yeah. Liam Toohey, and uh, we went down and we ended up selling them, myself and Brian. <laughs> But no, we all knew because they were there. They were there two years. Was it the year b outside? Hot scarves, headphones, <laughs> only yeah. oh, That was it. Yeah. <laughs> but that, like, that we we had a mad time there. As in, we had to make our own fun because, it was, like, we were all uh, eighteen-year-olds, and like there was nothing to do over there. That's we really used to play. This is no. This is a true God, The boys will tell you. We used to play invisible snooker in the <laughs> lobby. In the lobby, in the lobby of the hotel, this is as true as God as I'm sitting there. And all the people would be looking at us, and you'd be like that, and you'd be walking around, and you'd be all like that, and you'd be, you'd be like that, you know what I mean? And then like, we'd be doing that in the evenings, and then, then we used to go. Out and all the locals go, what's wrong with them Irish fellas are locked? Yeah, and then we, yeah, then we go out, and we we're, were in the car park of the hotel, right? Now this is true. The boys will tell you this. And we played invisible cricket as well. <laughs> so the fellas had all spread out, and fellas, Pat, remember Pat Dolan, the ex oh, yeah. uh, Pat's manager, he was there, and his brother Raymond, and they were there as well. And they used to be rolling them up, and fellas would be doing like that, and knocking, and fellas would be running around, <laughs> right, and <laughs> trying to catch you. And the KGB guys that were watching us, you know, the oh, security yeah, all yeah. the time. Would be stopping the traffic and lads would be running <laughs> back. Yeah. Yeah. Ball, yeah. yeah, I was, I was mad. <laughs> so great the, uh, the, great oh, was great. And then they opened up places for us. Like yeah. we, they're going, know. these lads are going mad. We better get them something to do. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was, okay. it was a great experience, you know. And, and playing, like I think there was forty thousand at each game. Yeah. But the stadium was so big in Tbilisi, I think it held 100,000, wow. you know? Like, it was, like a big Olympic kind of st yeah, size yeah, stadium, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it was fabulous. It was fabulous to experience learning, you know, and like the Brazilian team that were there, there was some. There was a guy called Muller. Yeah. You know, he went on to play for the oh, senior yeah, team yeah, and all that. Yeah, and yeah. then there was the same at the, the Spanish team. There was, a, there was a couple of the lads off that played, ended up playing for... Real Madrid and Barcelona, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so. That was the great thing about those tournaments, like you oh, come up against future superstars oh, kind of yeah. thing, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. And a future superstar right here, for both. Yeah. <laughs> a legend, uh, Derek Swan. PJ, one thing you always talk to me about uh, since coming, getting involved with Bowes is, is the madness that this club brings into yeah. your life. And you told me a story there recently that I think you just need to tell again. And I just, just it talk, to me it encapsulates the it was just two weeks ago. I was walking. I was walking by Daily Mail. I mean, the whole club is just it feels like a series of incredible coincidences, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, I was walking past the club and someone wanted to see the murals and stuff, you know, because Bose is everywhere at the moment. Like everybody, people who have never heard of Bose are suddenly it's on their radar, you know. Um, the popularity, of the whole league is amazing. And uh, she goes, "Can we have a look at the the murals?" I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And as we were walking past the, you know, the far side, not the Jody side. And uh, the team were in training, which has never happened. Yeah, you know. they were training on the main pitch. They were yeah. training on the main pitch. Was there, oh, what a great opportunity. Went in and was looking at them. And uh, Keith Long said I had to get out. <laughs> so I, and I, was, I was wearing the wrong top. I was wearing my dubs top that day. <laughs> uh, and, and, and so Keith Long goes, you have to leave. But I didn't hear him. I went, yeah. And he goes, did you hear me? Went, no. And he goes, you have to leave. I went, oh, no problem. He thought you were a spy. Yeah, so I, thought, I guess he thought it was a spy or someone watching them train. And right enough, I shouldn't have been standing there like a fool looking at the team <laughs> training. So... I got thrown out of Daily Mount. We were thrown out the back. 
and says, come on, we'll show the murals in the lane anyway. And we came down and the, the, uh, the Debenhams workers were all here down the lane about to get a, jer a jersey handed to them, you know, by Bohemians, like gifted to them. And, uh, in solidarity with that protest. In solidarity with the protest. And then I was asked, you wouldn't come out on the pitch when they're finished training and present the jersey to them. I was like, I've literally been thrown out <laughs> 10 minutes ago. I was, I was literally just thrown out a daily amount and now I have to wait for an hour for them to finish training <laughs> so I can go and present the jersey to them. I just thought, this is this club all over. This is amazing. Uh, yeah, so I was there to so present to them the jersey. I was thinking, this place is gas. Like, you just don't know what's going to happen one minute to the next. I mean, I mean the, you love being with Bowes, but Bowes also love having you as a fan as well, PJ. Um, as you said, you went to the zoo that day and ended up an activist. Yeah, I went to the zoo. That was the whole point. I went to the zoo. I was in the zoo earlier on. That was all I wanted to do. Yeah, And by a pure chance, I was wearing the jersey. So I don't know why I was wearing the jersey to the zoo, but anyway, I uh, wanted to go and see a couple of red pandas and ended up being an activist for the for the Devonham's workers. So I'm all right with it. Like brilliant, brilliant. I love that. Um, uh, Derek, not to put you on the spot, but I will put you on the spot. Um, what's your favourite memory as a Bowes player? Is there a match a particular favourite goal? There's a couple, couple of them, but it was always like it was always really special scoring in Daly Right. You know, and yeah. the roar that you'd have here, you know, like and like running along the stand after scoring, yeah. there. like the the just going wild. Go and wild. Like, yeah. it's, uh, you know, there's not many uh, feelings as good as that, you know, yeah. and like this, like as as you say, scoring the goals, like it, it was it was great to score good goals, but just to to celebrate, like that 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 buzz, yeah. you know, never leaves you, and right. it was a great great feeling, great a great experience to have, you know, like. And it was super. I, I scored a couple of goals in Europe. I scored a, uh, a header there down the far end of school. That's a, you've actually got a great record in Europe, haven't you? You've scored, you've scored more goals in Europe than anyone, I think, for Bowes. I'm not 100% sure on that, no, but you well, scored a few well, anyway. I scored a couple, yeah. yeah. I scored against Minsk and I scored a uh, Dynamo Minsk out there. And that was yeah. a, and it was a great, uh, they were a good, good side, you know. And uh, I, I scored a header in that game. And right. it was, a, you know, it was one of those that you, you know, you, Happy, you know, really. yeah. that, that 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 was a nice one, you know, and uh, a lot of the games here, I love the games, the the the, the Bowls and the Rovers derbies, and even the Pats ones as well, you know, and Shells, they were, you know, on the, it was great here. And of course, you were playing as well, Swanee, but the, all sides of the ground were opened up at the time, like kind of oh, thing. Yeah. Like, uh, I remember playing here against Derry when they first came, you know. Did you play in that match? Yeah. We oh, I was at that match because I, I did a podcast a few weeks ago and I was talking to your man about that match. I said, because I was a Bowes family whole life, I mean, it used to small crowds. Yeah, yeah. And then Derry City arrived in the league. The whole place, the whole fire. The whole side, place. Eight, I think they brought 18,000 fans with oh, was... I mean, my dad stand there going, what the <laughs> fuck's going yeah, on yeah, here? Yeah, I remember. Like, you know what I mean? I remember. And Alan Sunderland was playing yeah. with him. Do you remember That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I played in that game. Yeah. I remember getting the bus in, actually. I was coming in on the house and I was getting the bus in before the game and I never seen as many buses, you know, as yeah, in we were all coming down moon. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Was so mad, it was unbelievable yeah. and it was a great, great experience. You're from, so you're from Finglas? I live in yeah. Finglas now, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I, I remember coming down there and they were all parked down along the uh, the cemetery, you know, That's all right, the lay yeah. boys there, you know. But it was unbelievable, unbelievable to play and it was great with the crowds that when they, they brought into the league, you know. The, like for, for about two years until yeah. the novelty wore off, Derry used to bring 10, 15,000 every match. <laughs> great. And it was great, great to play in front of. Yeah, know, absolutely. You know, really was, Proper you know. atmosphere yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's pretty much, I don't know, I, I, I think I've pretty much covered anything unless anyone wants to put in or nothing else. Um, any messages for your fans out there, PJ? Any oh. messages are you talking about? <laughs> the, the less I say, the better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, um, I, I, you know, I suppose, like, as we're all Bowes fans, I suppose, at this stage, and we're all very happy with Bowes. We've had a kind of a, a, a bit of a ropey opening. But now we've started to find our groove a little bit, and uh, and here's to uh, here's the Bowes finishing the season very strong, and here's the fans getting back at the Daily Mail Park, and we'll all see oh, each other, oh, and maybe have a point yeah. down at the bar. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah what I mean? we'll look forward to that. That'll be amazing. Derek and Paige, thanks very much, alright. No Cheers, nice. lads. Cheers. We're looking forward to the challenge of Thursday. Um, looking forward to playing in the Aviva Stadium in front of. 6,000 Bohemian supporters. Um, it's a great opportunity for the boys uh, to play in the national stadium, to play in front of, uh, you know, a big crowd, which we would be unable to cater for. 
uh, in Daily Mount, unfortunately. So, in the absence of having Daily Mount available to us, I think it's a brilliant opportunity for so many supporters to come and watch the team and hopefully we'll give them something to, to, to be excited about to put in a performance and that's all we're, we're focused on. We're focused on putting in a really good performance that can get people on the edge of their seats, to get people excited about seeing their team play. So, um, it'll be difficult. The opposition are a good side. Um, they've got some good quality players. The game is finely balanced and obviously there has to be a winner on the night. So, uh, we're looking forward to looking after our performance, to getting after that and to trying to you know, to, to put in the best display that we possibly can. And like I said, we hope to give the fans and the supporters that are able to come to the game to, something to get excited about, to get behind the team and to make um, make a lot of noise in the Aviva Stadium. So, yeah, that's it. Hello, Sean Bourne here with an update on the latest women's senior news. Since the, the last time, we have played two games and unfortunately we haven't picked up any points. First game was away to Cork and we lost 1-0. The girls played well on the day and we can take away a lot of positives from the game. Next game we played away to Piemount and we all know how good Piemount are and on this occasion they beat us 2-0. Again we can pick up a lot of positives and there were periods in the game where we had good possession of the ball and we create a few goal scoring opportunities. We, we have a break this weekend and it will give us a bit of time to prepare for a game against DLR Waves. On other news, our player Nimi Shamil has had a, a, a bad leg break and she will be out for the rest of the season. We wish her all the best and we are looking forward to her returning back to training in the near future. Thanks for listening and talk soon, Sean. Mom, boss.